Today, I want to look at two nice infinitely nested radicals that turn out to be very simple numbers in the end. So we'll first look at the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 forever and ever and ever and ever, where we have all of those nested within one another. And then next, we'll look at the square root of 5 plus the square root of 11 plus the square root of 19 plus the square root of 29 plus the square root of 41, again, all nested in one another. Okay, so let's maybe look at this one first. So I want to first look at this and maybe rewrite it as a sequence. So in fact, we can write it as a nice recursive sequence. So let's let a sub 1 equal the square root, or I should say the cube root of 6. And then let's write down a sub 2, which would be the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6. And let's find a copy of a1 inside of a2 so we can figure out how this recursion goes. But let's notice that this is exactly equal to the cube root of 6 plus a1. And that really opens everything up. That really makes us notice that a n plus 1 is definitely, in fact, the cube root of 6 plus a n. Okay. And then that uniquely describes this sequence. And in fact, this symbol over here of this infinitely nested cube root sum object could be interpreted as the limit of this recursively defined sequence. But to make sure this has a limit, we'd like to prove that. And we'll do that with the monotone sequence theorem. So we'll first show that it's an increasing sequence. And then after we show it's an increasing sequence, we'll show that it's bounded above. And then by the monotone sequence theorem, that tells us that it must be in fact convergent, but then we can use a trick via its recursive definition to calculate the limit quite easily. Okay, so now let's first show that it's increasing, which is fairly straightforward. Let's take a n plus one, and let's notice we can write that as the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 plus dot 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 plus the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 at the end, where there are n plus 1 total 6s. Okay, but now let's notice that if we remove this final cube root of 6, we most definitely get something smaller. Now, it's not going to be much smaller because it's nested within all of those radicals, but it will be a tiny bit smaller. So let's remove this term right here. So maybe I'll put a box around it. This is the one that we're removing. So that'll give us the inequality so that this is bigger than the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 plus all the way down and this last cube root of 6. Whereas now there are n total sixes instead of n plus one total sixes. But this object right here is exactly a sub n. So reading it from the left to the right, we see that a n plus one is bigger than a n. And that shows that this is definitely an increasing sequence. Okay, so now let's show that it's bounded above, which is actually even like a little bit easier to show. So I'll just say bounded, but in this case, it's clear that we need to show that it's bounded above because we've got this increasingness. Okay, so let's make the claim that a sub n is less than three for all n bigger than or equal to one. So notice that holds in the base case for sure. And that's because the cube root of six is less than the cube root of eight and the cube root of eight is two and two is less than three. So we're good to go there. So now let's make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis will be that we suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we have a sub k is less than 3. But now let's add 6 to both sides of this, and we'll see that 6 plus a sub k is less than 6 plus 3, which is 9. But now let's take the q root of both sides, and we'll have the cube root of 6 plus a sub k is less than the cube root of 9. But let's notice that the cube root of 9 is less than the cube root of 27, which is itself equal to 3. 
But likewise, over here, this object is AK plus one by our recursive definition. So we've showed this is increasing and bounded, which means that it converges and now we're ready to find its limit. So we just showed that this thing has a limit using the monotone sequence theorem, and now we're ready to calculate that limit. So let's take L and we'll set that equal to the limit as N goes to infinity of A sub N plus one. In other words, this object over here written in terms of the limit of our sequence. But now let's apply this recursion and we'll have the limit as N goes to infinity of the cube root of six plus A sub N. But now since the cube root function is continuous, we can bring the limit inside and that'll give us the cube root of six plus L. Next up, we can cube both sides and that'll leave us with L cubed equals L plus six, or in other words, L cubed minus L plus six equals zero. But now we have a cubic function for which we'd like to find the roots. But luckily enough, this has a rational root and that rational root occurs at two, you could just test all the rational roots that we know from the rational root theorem. And that will give us a rational root at L equals two, which means L minus two factors out of this. And then furthermore, what's left over is L squared plus two L plus three. So we know that our limit satisfies the following polynomial equation. But we can check that the discriminant of this quadratic is negative, which means there are no real roots of this quadratic. But since this is a sequence of real numbers, we know that we must get a real value for the limit. So that means this root here attached to L minus two is the limit in question. So in other words, this final value over here is in fact equal to two. Okay, so now that we finished this first infinite nested radical, let's look at this second. So for the second nested radical, we're not gonna be quite as careful. I'll let you fill in the details. You can do something similar, although it is a bit trickier. I'd also like to point out that it comes from the math stack exchange. You can check it out if you want to. This is the post where I found it, but I think this is in several different posts. So first we'd like to see what the pattern is between these numbers 5, 11, 19, 29, 41, and so on and so forth. And in fact, these are all outputs of a quadratic function. So I'll call that quadratic function f. So if we set f of x equal to x squared plus 3x plus 1, what we'll see is that f evaluated at 1 is 5, f evaluated at 2 is equal to 11, f evaluated at 3 is equal to 19, f evaluated at 4 is equal to 29, and so on and so forth. So this is the function that's in fact building all of these numbers within this square root. Okay, great. But now let's notice that we can take this radical in question and maybe I'll call this thing like magenta box, just so that we've got some notation with it. And let's notice that magenta box can now be expressed as the square root of f of one plus the square root of f of two plus the square root of f of three plus the square root of f of four plus dot, dot, dot. So this following infinitely nested radical where we've got our function defined up there. So in order to solve this, we'll actually generalize it a little bit. So let's define the following function and I'll call that function capital F of X and I'll define it to be the square root of lowercase f of X plus the square root of lowercase f of x plus one plus the square root of lowercase f of x plus two plus dot, dot, dot. Great. So notice using this language, we see that our final answer here, this magenta box is indeed capital F evaluated at one. So if we can get a formula for capital F, then we're good to go. So let's see how we might do that. 
Well, let's notice that inside of this nested radical over here is a copy of capital F evaluated at x plus 1. And that's because of how this nesting is working. So now maybe we could square some things to get rid of the square root and then see what happens. So let's do that. So squaring both sides, we'll have capital F of x squared equals little f of x plus capital F, f of x plus 1. Or in other words, we'll have capital F of x quantity squared minus capital F of x plus 1 equals lowercase f of x. Where let's notice that lowercase f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 1. And now we're going to make a big jump. And this big jump relies on everything being constructed what I'll call nicely. So let's notice that the left hand, or I should say the right hand side of this is a quadratic polynomial. So perhaps the left hand side is also a quadratic polynomial. But if the left hand side is a quadratic polynomial, then it would make sense for f of x to be a linear polynomial so that when we square it, we get a quadratic polynomial. So let's, let's let that fuel the following guess for capital F of x. So in other words, f of x is ax plus b. So that would be the most general form of a linear polynomial. So let's see what that leaves us with. So if we square ax plus b, we'll get a squared x squared plus 2abx plus b squared. And then we have to subtract f evaluated at x plus 1. So that'll be minus ax minus a minus b. And we need that to be equal to x squared plus 3x plus 1. But now let's equate coefficients. So let's look at the coefficient of x squared on both sides of the equation. So on the left hand side, it's simply a squared. And on the right hand side, it's simply one. So that means we get a squared equals one. And then let's look at the coefficient of x on both sides of the equation. So on the left hand side, we have 2ab minus a. So like I said, 2ab minus a. And on the right hand side, we have the number 3. And then finally, for constants, we have b squared minus ab. So like I said, for constants, which I'll denote as 1, we have b squared minus a minus b equals 1, because we have 1 on the right hand side of the equation. OK, so now let's notice if a squared is equal to 1, then a is equal to plus or minus 1. And now you can go through both of those possibilities in the remaining set of equations. And what you'll see is that only one of them works. And the only one that works is a equals plus 1. And in the case that you get a equals plus 1, maybe into this equation, you'll see that b has to be equal to 2. So I won't work, out, work those details out because that's fairly straightforward, but we get a equals 1 and b equals 2. So that means f of x equals ax plus b. So that means that we can take this define f of x here and maybe put in the result. I'll just put note that x plus 2 can be rewritten in this crazy form as this infinitely nested radical. But let's recall that our infinitely nested radical was just capital F evaluated at 1. In other words, x plus 2 evaluated at 1. So that gives us a value for this right here, which is 3. So I think it's pretty interesting that both of these infinitely nested radicals ended up as natural numbers. That's, of course, because they're well constructed. And maybe you could take some inspiration from how these were constructed to give nice values at the end to construct your own. Maybe post in the comments if you come up with anything that seems interesting. And that's a good place to stop.